If you are as huge fan of Perplexity AI as I am and you use it every day, then great news for you because a few days ago, uh, to be exact at October 24th, Perplexity application has been released. I mean application for macOS, the desktop version. And this is great news. And in this video, I will show you how I go through the installation process, how the application looks and how it works. I will show you pros, cons and the issues that I have with this application. And the issues will be the last one, but stay with me till the end to see what it is. I hope that your coffee is ready, same as mine, and we are ready to go with our video. So first things, we are going straight to my computer, which is right here, and I will show you how you can install app and what is the user experience during that. Okay, so right now we are in the App Store. So let's download this bastard and we are ready to go. So we are going to get started. If I wanted to launch on startup, yes, because I am using Perplexity AI a lot. We have brand new shortcuts, but we will talk about them in a the moment. We can customize them, that's great. And it's quite easy to do. Well, it's the best if you would have uh, account it might be free account or it might be paid account but you should have one so i will just sign in to my account okay and i visited my email uh, and i have my code i will just enter the code manually here to sign in and looks like we are ready to go okay great so our application is installed and we are logged in now I will do a quick overview of the application so you can see what we have here. Like usual in our Perplexity app, we have new thread where you can just write start new thread. On the discovery page, we have usual stuff where you can go through the pages created by other people or I guess sometimes just AI. And we have library with our searches and we have our threads, we have pages, we have spaces. It might be curious to check which options we have here. So pretty straightforward, but if you know the settings page from Perplexity Web Application, then you will see already that there are a lot of uh, options missing here. So now it's time to show the shortcuts. And we have them right here. As you can see, you have four main shortcuts. So we will start from the new thread. As you can see, it's shift, command and P. And for me, this shortcut is taken already because I'm using Visual Studio Code, cursor, and this shortcut is already taken by other things. So I want to change this shortcut for uh, shift, command and T. And T probably is also uh, more intuitive because you are starting new thread. So for me, it will be the shift command and the voice mode, voice dictation. So these are our shortcuts. Basically, I don't use voice mode, so I want to uh, disable this. File upload might be useful if you don't want to use uh, space to store files and ask more questions, but you want to summarize something really quick. And voice dictation also might be quite useful sometimes. And right now, when I will hit uh, shift command and T, I have new thread. We have the same like new thread uh, as using web application. So you can choose your focus field here. You can attach files. You can use voice to just dictate uh, what you want to ask. So usual stuff, but it's great that you, we have here, we have this shortcut here because now when you are in any application, you can be in your web browser or do whatever while you can be while coding. You can just click your shortcut, ask the question. What is perplexity? And you will go straight to the app and it will answer your question. This is very good and will be a lot faster for you. Okay, so we are at our home again. And right now I'd like to talk about the drawbacks of this uh, desktop application uh, because there are three that uh, I see already after just a few days of using it and 
basically, to be honest, I've seen them uh, when I just started to use this, this application and I started it just in the morning when it was released. And the first thing is that you don't have access to your like master-like prompt, uh, which is in your profile settings. Right now we are uh, in our web application. This is my browser. And here, if you will go to the settings and we will hit profile, you have like this master-like prompt uh, when you, where you can say something about yourself, but you can also give some kind of instructions which will be applied for like every other prompt. Uh, and this feature is missing in our application right here. As you can see here, the options or settings are very limited comparing to the web application. So this is somehow one of the cons here. Another con is that we can't uh, edit pages. So if we'll go to the library, as you can see in section pages, I have one page here that I started to just test pages four months ago and it's still in draft mode and we don't have any option to edit it. Here we have, we can only add it to space. We can share it, we can bookmark it, but there is no option to just edit. While when we will go to the web application and we'll go to the library, we see pages here. And when we will click this, we can just continue editing, like here. And we have our page editor, we can ask questions or, you know, write stuff, which we cannot do in the desktop application, which is somehow not that great, especially if you are writing those pages. Fortunately for me, I'm not the pages guy at the moment, but I can see that they might be useful if you are learning some stuff uh, and doing research. You can use pages instead, your own notes at least, during this research. You can just summarize stuff there and then you can make your notes again. Uh, so that might be useful. Going back to our drawbacks, the third thing and the last one is that you can't pick an image generation model in this desktop application. Right now, like you can see here, we don't have option to pick an image generation model. We can only select our AI model, which is good. But when we are in the web application right now, you can see that you have more options. So you can pick image generation model right here and we have few options to, to pick. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of using Perplexity AI to generate images, but for sure there are people who sometimes use this feature. So you might be limited, beware. Just keep this in mind. Okay, now desktop app pros, because there are also like three for me which I like very much. Of course, the first thing are shortcuts because I love shortcuts and I'm using them all the way. To be honest, at the moment, I'm training to use keyboard only as much as I can. Whether I'm coding in Visual Studio Code, in IntelliJ IDEA, or I'm doing any other stuff on my computer, I try to not touch my mouse. Uh, so shortcuts are great. And that was the thing that I was missing uh, when using browser only. So right now I'm very happy that I can just hit shift command and T and have my new thread started. Only thing that I'm missing here is if I could only assign a space or pick a space right here to ask my question, including this space, that would be awesome. Also, the second pros. Using desktop application is less destructive than using a web browser and probably everyone knows about this, about it because, you know, whenever you visit your browser, there is some risk that your mind will flow above the topic that you are searching on and you will think about, oh, maybe I will check this, maybe I will check that. It's short way to, you know, to distractions and other stuff. So this is less destructive and this is very good. And the last thing is that 
you are this step closer to, you know, start your research faster. And this is very good because if I do things and I need quick research for something, you know, I don't want to open browser, search for perplexity. I just want to start searching. And for this, desktop application is just great. So huge plus for this. Yeah, like they are giving pluses for having desktop application and things that are obvious that you can do having desktop app. But not many companies uh, produce desktop apps at the moment. And the last thing, the most important for me, I guess, the issues I have with Perplexity desktop application. And I will show you these issues right here. We are in the App Store, yeah. And in the App Store, we can see the app privacy section and what our application that we are installing uses and which privileges it has. And I was shocked, I can say. I was very shocked when I saw this for the first time. Like, take a look, guys. What information Perplexity is keeping about us? I'm asking, why? Perplexity application need information about my purchases. Why they need information about financial info? Why contact info? Why identifiers? Part of this I can understand, like usage data, search history. I don't know why they need it, but maybe it's somehow useful. Diagnostics, okay. Obvious that it will be very useful to improve the product. Location, maybe they, they would need it, but I don't know why to, but these things that I said, identifiers, contact info, financial info, purchases, why they need those? I don't know. I'm very disappointed with this part. Maybe there is some other explanation. You know, I'm not yet iOS developer and I don't know exactly what this information means like, you know, what exactly they can get about you, uh, but it doesn't look so great. You have to keep in mind that there will be some information uh, correlated with you and they can gather this. And now the question rises. If I will use this application in my daily work? And the answer is, yes, I will use this application because this will streamline my work a lot and it will help me a lot to move faster, to be less distracted. And these are like pluses or pros from using this application are higher for me than the cons of using it. So in overall, I'm very happy for this application, but I'm kind of disappointed by the perplexity company and by fact that they are getting those informations about me. I'm not happy with that. But application itself, itself, I guess, good job and I will use it. So guys, see you in the next one.